What's going on, y'all? So listen. What's going on, y'all? Listen, this a random little video. Um, girl, all these spam calls. Anybody else getting an influx of spam callers all of a sudden? I was getting them at one point, and then they kind of stopped. And now all of a sudden, they're starting up again, and they're actually allegedly from Chicago or whatever. Girl, fuck all that. Don't answer them. Y'all be careful with them text messages that people be sending, too. Don't click on no links in your emails and all that shit, too, because you don't want nobody to get your personal information and all that shit. But anyway, I have recently spoke about this in my What It Is video uh about the little documentary or little docu-series that you know they was doing for um casey anthony because bitch i feel like i spoke her up in a tweet and then all of a sudden it was coming out that she was doing this little docu-series or whatever on peacock because i was like you know what i just found it real funny how and i mean it ain't funny i'm just saying like mama got away with murder and um Mom got away with doing what she did and, um, you know, just went about her day. And next thing you know, ooh, Peacock putting a three-part series up about her. I said, girl, what? Who gonna sit there and watch that shit? My dumb ass did, okay? Because honestly, curiosity killed the cat. Because listen, this whole situation, if you did not know about what happened with Kaylee Anthony and Casey Anthony, um, you know, it was terrible. It was a terrible time. It was a terrible time in our country. It, This shit brought us all together. It was like, I don't want to put it on that level, but imagine the fury or whatever that was happening around the O.J. Simpson trial back in the day when that shit happened. And that was with our parents, okay? I feel like the people in my generation, this was for us, okay? Um, meaning for us to get upset about, for us to pay attention about, because everybody in the country was on this shit. I'm not comparing the same thing, you know, the trials. I'm talking about the significance, meaning how big it was. As big as the O.J. Simpson trial was for our parents or whatever, when they probably were, you know, young adults and all that stuff, baby, this how big it was, the um, Kaylee, uh, Casey Anthony and the Kaylee Anthony trial situation that was going on when I was younger, okay? Baby, when this shit, uh, when this happened, let me see. I want to see how old I was, because I remember it. I remember it, and you could not... You could not turn the TV off. It was 2011. So what, This is that was like 11 years ago? Almost, yeah, that was almost 12 years ago. Girl, listen. You could not go anywhere because all of a sudden it just came out of nowhere that this child, because listen, you know, one thing people don't play around with, and I hate to do it like this, but we have to be honest. One thing people don't play around with is when white kids go missing, okay? And especially the little girls, you know, and I hate to put that out there, but if you from where I come from and if you like me or whatever, you look like me, you understand the significance. But at the moment, you know, this was what a two year old child that went missing and we couldn't find her, you know, and it was just strange from the get go. It was just strange from the goddamn get go. And I was just like. When I looked at the, it's a three-part series, okay? When I looked at it, I said, oh, what are we going to do? What, what, what more information can we learn about this girl that's going to change our minds about, you know, Casey Anthony, okay? Because at the end of the day, a lot of us who went through the trial and went through that whole time, we've already made up our mind. You know, regardless of what the court said, you know, what their defense, her defense, I will say this. She had a good defense team. She had a good defense team because the defense team is there to try to create reasonable doubt, okay? Therefore, putting this doubt that it's a possibility that, you know, we saying that she did this, but then again, the way y'all presenting it, it's like, hmm, can she really do it? You're putting doubt up in the jury's mind. So that's how they came out. You know, I be looking at court shows and I be looking at, you know, all that stuff, whatever. Reasonable doubt, bitch. Okay, because without a doubt, if we would have just came up in there, bitch, I would have been like guilty. They probably would have said, ask your ass can't be on the, um, you, you, you can't be on the jury. I was like, but look at the facts. I mean, just, just look at it. 
Because, baby, I would have stopped it. And I know this ain't right because you got to look at everything. But I would have stopped it when, and, and my mind would have been made up. No lie. My mind would have been made up when I found out how long it took for her to goddamn report the child missing. And I would have been like, yeah, put the whole fucking family in jail. That's what I would have said. Okay? That's what I would have said. Because, you know, it, it, it was just a heartbreaking mess. You know? And... It's a lot, and I know it, it, it tugged on a lot of people's heartstrings because you got people out here that's trying to have kids. You got people out here that would do anything to protect their children, and if something were to happen to them, they would do anything at the instant to try to get them back and get them help, get them safety and all of that stuff. And to hear what the way that this went about, oh, you know, and um, with social media, yes, yeah, social media was around back then, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like that played a little bit of part of it, too, with public opinion or whatever. I mean, it probably wasn't as uh, prevalent as it is now. Uh, oh, girl, if this shit would have went down, if this would have went down during the time of right now, like in the last five years, especially when we had the Trayvon Martin situation, we had the, you know, uh, Mike Brown stuff. And I'm saying these cases because... These are the cases that really, you know, stir stuff up. You know, you had the uh, uh, shootings and, you know, um, 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 mass shootings and, you know, people doing stuff or whatever in churches and killing people and all this stuff or whatever. Social media really brought a lot of this stuff to the light, you know, and more so kept it in the light. Kept their foot on people next. Bitch, she wouldn't have been able to survive up in this motherfucker. I don't know how they would have had got a jury in this day and time. I honestly don't know how they got a non-biased jury back then. In a lot of these cases these days, I just don't get how they get, especially when they be like these big profile cases. I don't get how they get cases. I mean, um, jury. Because you cannot tell me that you have not heard about this case. You don't have a little bit of bias about this particular case, especially if you on social media. If you, you searching the internet, you looking at the newspaper or whatever, they talking about it on TV. So you mean to tell me, you? I, I just want to know what the process is. I remember I got called for jury duty one time. Girl, it was a mess, okay? It was some dumb stuff that the dude was clearly guilty of. And it wasted my time because we went up in there. First of all, we were sitting back there for like, I mean, I wasn't there as long as other people have been. You know, I've heard other people experiences or whatever. I mean, they fed us. They gave us uh, money or whatever to go get some food. And I went and ate because we was downtown. So, you know, we had some shops down there, whatever. You know, come back. And, you know, I was sitting there over an hour before lunch. Did, went to lunch, sitting there over an hour after lunch. And then when my name finally got called, my group or whatever, we go to this trial. And it was in a little room. It wasn't even in a real courtroom. I was like, what? I wanted the real courtroom experience. Not on my end. But, you know, I just wanted to see how it was. But it was some stupid shit that he knew he was guilty of because... They must have talked for a good, the, 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 the prosecutor or whatever, they talked for a good five minutes laying everything out and then the defense was just like, you know, fuck it, we just gonna go ahead and do this and do this. Y'all dismiss. The judge said y'all dismiss, y'all to get y'all vouchers or whatever, y'all payment, okay, when y'all get out the uh, thing. I said, so what? We was here for what? You wasted our time. <laughs> <laughs> you wasted our time, girl. I, that little chump change they gave us for the day. I was so mad. But anyway, you know, that was that. Girl, I wouldn't be able to do it. I wouldn't be able to be on no, um, no, because that shit, I feel like that'll mess me up, y'all. That'll mess me up the way being, because I was about to say, I would rather be on a big jury, like a big case or whatever, the juror on a big case if I ever get called in. And let me pop, stop putting that up in the universe because I really don't want that to happen. Because I feel like especially, you know, these cases that hit the national news for real, for real, I feel like that shit'll fuck with my mind so bad. All right. You know, some of these stuff, when I be hearing these stories or whatever, it messes with me because I'm like, you, you come to realize that, I mean, even though we're imperfect, you realize how some people really are soulless. Some people really just are evil. And, you know, I just like, how can you sleep at night getting all of that information and seeing all of the stuff? And I just wouldn't be able to take it. I wouldn't be able to take it. Maybe it'll mess me if I need therapy after that. I need therapy now, but I definitely need therapy after that. But 
that case blew up so big, okay? And I remember them protesting. Y'all talking about the way we protest now. Girl, they was outside that lady house, okay? The mama and daddy house, all right? You're a murderer. You're a child murderer. Where is Kaylee Anthony? I said, yeah, bitch, where she at? Where the hell she at, lady? You know what I'm saying? And see, I was looking at the thing and, you know, I feel like this came a little bit too late. <laughs> This came a little bit too late, and I don't know if it was a marketing thing or it was calculated to do something when, you know, people have not been talking about her. And I guess the, um, you know, the scene of America, the scene of how everything is so politically correct and, you know, we're a little bit more sensitive and maybe people will actually just think about it a little bit more and be like, okay, well, this was done then. In today's era, this probably would have been done and all this stuff. It didn't work for me like that, Miss Casey, because you could have stayed quiet. I'm just going to say that. And I felt like she threw some stuff up in there. Granted, at one point, I was sitting here like, mm, could she? She almost got me. She almost got me, like, slightly. But then I was sitting here like, no, you still had something to do with it. This is what I feel. I don't know the truth, but this is what I feel in my soul, in my spirit. My soul and my spirit said that lady had something to do with the uh, death of her child. And I feel as though the parents helped, uh, you know, cover it up. And then the daddy flipped on her and put it all on Casey. Okay? I feel like he had something to do with it. I feel like she definitely had something to do with it. And the mama had something to do with it. The mama probably just knew some shit that was going on. And that's what she was complicit in. Casey knew something happened. Or the daddy probably did something. She probably did something. They both probably did something. And they was involved in the little cover up of it. all. And the daddy wanted to put it all on little Casey or whatever. And I said, you know what? Bitch, the daddy should be in jail too. But see, the only thing that we... I feel like we already knew that he was a former cop. And, you know, looking at some of the interrogation videos and all the stuff, he was just... He was he was handling that those interviews, whatever, like a former cop would. He knew what was going on. And so, at the same time, I'm just sitting here like... You know, we get it that, obviously, if you're still here, we're not hearing nothing negative about you... Why decide to come out now, 10 plus years later, and think that, you know, the viewpoint about you would change with this documentary, these little docuseries, okay? You know, she had her tears going, and I'm sorry, I just wasn't moved. And, and, and this may sound cold-hearted to some people that probably believe her or whatever, but I, I you know, they want to throw in there... And I feel for anybody that went through, you know, childhood sexual abuse or whatever. Um, they threw that up in there. And I will say that I believe that that happened. Okay. I believe that the daddy most likely did something to her. Um, but also, I believe that, you know, is she towards the end on the last episode, she remember hearing somebody say that the daddy said something about smelling um, missing the smell of Kaylee's sweet sweat. And I said, oh, who said some shit like that? You know, who, who would say some stuff like that? It didn't sound right. It sound very on the line. I don't know why, but it just triggered me to sound like, you know, some little funny business was going on, some little probably pedophilia, whatever that was going on or whatever. And, um, they was like, girl, he said that at her funeral. Mind you, Casey wasn't at the funeral, so she didn't know what was going on. Girl, they had recorded the thing, and they they played the exact clip when he said that shit. And I said, mm. that's what made me think, like, yeah, so Casey probably wasn't lying about the fact that she was a uh, childhood sexual assault that was going on, rape or whatever that was going on. Sorry to say that out loud like that. And... It's not far-fetched that he possibly could have been doing something to the granddaughter. That's what I'm saying. But at the same time, I do not feel like she's 100% innocent in this whole thing. No, my feelings have not changed. And I'm going to tell you why. This was a waste of time. And because honestly, nobody cares. Nobody I been around. Nobody I've been seeing on the internet or you know, on social media circles, because I, I go through all, you know, I travel from this, this circle, this circle, this circle, I just look at everything, and nobody has been mentioning, oh, I want to know what's the update with Casey Anthony, where she at, where she at, you know what I'm saying, um, uh, no, 
you know, and I don't want this to open up doors for people like uh, George Zimmerman to get a little docu-series or whatever and to state his case and his side and his feelings and, you know, what's been happening afterwards um, with from his situation with the Trayvon Martin case because that's another one that got off that should have went to jail, you know. But unfortunately, it didn't happen because we don't need it. We don't need those emotions. We don't need those feelings being stirred back up, especially when we have things going on that's going on right about now, okay? We just not in that mind frame, and we're, a lot of us is just not as forgiving as we thought we were, okay? Especially when we know something is not right and that a person should be locked up. You know what I'm saying? That's how we feel. That's how we feel. We feel like justice really was not served in these cases. And justice definitely was not served for Miss uh, little Miss Kaylee, okay? And let me tell you what really messed us up. And I was looking at the whole thing, right? See, I really ain't even got much to say about it. I'm just babbling about what I remember about the case. Um, I feel like this little case brought white and black America together because baby, what we don't do, we don't play about kids. Okay. We don't play about kids. We was like, stone her. That's what it was. I'm sorry. It, it, it got a little, it got a lot. It got a lot. We was just out there like that, you know? Um, and after looking at some of the facts of the case, I feel like, like, you know, the prosecutors and whatever, they really felt as though they had, you know, because they had the public on their side. They had the public on their side and they probably thought, you know, that this was going to translate into the courtroom and they just wasn't prepared for or ready to have the defense come back and be like, okay, that's fine that the public may think that, but this is what's going on. We got this, 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 this. And what the defense literally did was create a reasonable doubt again like could she have done this or could she not have done this you know could somebody else could be uh 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 the person that did it well they did learn is that they didn't question anybody but her and truth be told i feel as though yeah they should have thoroughly investigated because if they would have thoroughly investigated if you ask me the daddy probably would have been in jail too you know and at that moment if they would have thoroughly investigated i feel as though and they didn't just focus solely on casey and just make her the prime suspect i feel as though then they would have got a two-for-one special and both their asses would have been in jail they both would have found been found guilty on something you know and they probably would have been serving some time Okay, that's what I feel. Um, but what messed it up with me, Miss Casey, and this is why I would forever say that you had something to do with a girlfriend and your tears and talking about how the public did you and talking about how you had to go live with your defense attorney and all this stuff, or whatever, and you working in the law firm. I don't care about that shit, bitch. Okay, you miss me. You miss me when it came out that you did not report your daughter missing until 31 days later. I don't give a damn if my mama or my sibling or whoever was like, just hold on, just hold on, just hold on. It is a child, baby. It is a child. And it's my child that came out of my body that I carried for nine months and I nursed it, okay? That I nursed, bitch. And I love my baby. So therefore, I'm going to do whatever it is to get my baby home and find justice for her and make sure that she back right here on my bosom. That's what she going to be, okay? You, you're going to be right here underneath me, you know, and I ain't going to never let you out my sight again. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't let nobody tell you something. Just hold off. Just hold off. Bitch, it's a child. Anything could be happening to that child. The people in this world is fucking crazy, okay? They don't give a care, you know, when it comes to criminal activities and shit like that. Ch children are one of the most vulnerable, I feel like, victims of a lot of shit, you know? Um... And you just sat there or did whatever you did and listened to whoever the fuck it is that you claim you listened to and didn't say nothing about your child being gone. And why the 31st day? How could I, that, that odd number, that odd number, bitch, that's a whole fucking month. That's a month in a day, bitch. <laughs> hey, girl, that, girl, what? 31 days, that's what she missed me at. And I feel as though if she would have reported the baby missing like at least a couple of days after it happened, because, you know, sometimes they say you got to wait 24, 48 hours or whatever. But I feel like when it's a child, it's like real quick. You just go ahead and call in so that they can go ahead and put an Amber Alert out there. But um, 
Because, bitch, these days, them Amber Alerts will be waking me up. Okay, I be minding my business. Burp, burp, burp. I be like, oh, get the baby. Y'all better find the baby. You know what I'm saying? But, baby, they got resources. And they had resources back then, too. And they just didn't utilize them. And that's just what made everybody right then and there. That one specific fact that you waited 31 days to call in about your child being missing or something going on. Um, That's where everybody drew the line. And then they was like, baby, within them 31 days, mama was out there partying. Mama was out here doing this. And I get it. You got to still live your life. But, baby, it just wouldn't have been me. <laughs> it wouldn't be me. Girl, I'm, if we need to party and let off steam, I'm not going to do that because my focus is going to be on my child. And, see, that's where I feel like the prosecutor and them was um, – uh, the public opinion. They was they was harping on that. They was probably gonna use that or thinking banking on that. And it kinda didn't work because again, you know, you can't really put public opinion into the judicial opinion, but hey, it is what it is. Cause if that's the case, a whole bunch of people probably would have been already locked up that's still walking free that should have been locked up. But at the same time, I'm just sitting here like if my child, I'm, I'm putting, because I don't have kids, but if you are not new to my channel, you've heard me speak about if I was to have kids, okay? And y'all speak, and, and I've spoken about the reason why I don't have kids at this moment. Oh, excuse me. I don't have kids at this moment because I know mentally I am not prepared to go to the end of, um, to, to, to deal with, you know, the paranoia that I know that I will have when I have kids. Okay. Meaning that I will be very much a helicopter mom. Okay. I, I just know at least for the first child, at least for the first child, you know, you have your first one, you do a whole bunch of stuff, you know, so tight to the vest, but then by the time you get your second, third one, baby, it's like, go ahead, do what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Get away from me. You know what I'm saying? Go play, go play. You ain't gonna be all up under me, but when that first baby come, I already know. Uh-uh. You are staying right here with me. Where where mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. you're gonna work with me, okay? You know, because you really can't trust nobody these days. You cannot trust nobody these days to do what they say and to not do anything to your kids. That's what I be thinking, you know. And I feel like at this moment, like I'm getting out of that stage. I mean, I'm not ready for kids, but I'm really in the auntie stage now. I have fully embraced it. Y'all, I'm 35 years old, okay, bitch? And I never wanted to have kids like myself, so, you know, like carry a baby, whatever. But if my partner wanted to have a child, that's fine or whatever. But me personally, I did not want to carry a kid. Um, but I really am in my auntie stage, and I'm really ready to, like, just... I just been having this urge to, like, spoil some kids. <laughs> I really want to have, you know, somebody just, because my, my sisters don't have kids. Thank God, because one of them is, a, my little sister about to turn 19 next month, talking about some, you want to uh, come for me, uh, come to the birthday dinner? I said, what? Is this when y'all celebrate birthdays like that? What the fuck is going on? Baby, y'all done moved to Indiana and just get, you know, oh, okay, that's what we doing? Fine, you know, let me know the details. But, um... You know, so she about to turn 19. She don't need no kids right about now. My other sister, she ain't into kids like that. So I already knew that ain't going to happen. But I'm literally like, I, I need some friends that got kids. And my one friend that really, a couple of my friends that do have kids, they don't even live here. Okay? They don't live here. And I'm like, damn, I want to baby fam. I want to spoil them. I want to, you know, bat them stuff and all this shit. Come watch the kids. Okay, come on. We go out on the town and all that stuff. I'm ready to do all of that shit. I'm just not ready to do it with me. Okay? Because, listen, I'm just not mentally. Because I can get them back. That's what my thought is, you know? But, again, I don't even have kids, but I know how I would be. Y'all just heard all of that, right? So imagine that's your only child. That is your only child. And you wait 31 days to call the cops after they're missing. Do you know how much of a fucking wreck I would be? My mind would not be. And I know people grieve and deal with things differently. But my mind just would not. And I don't know too many people's minds who it would be to just... Be thinking about going out partying and having a good time or whatever when I don't know where my baby is. That is what got me. And I feel as though the public probably wouldn't have been so harsh on her and probably would have gave her like, 
the benefit of a doubt that she probably didn't have anything to do with it if they would have reported the girl missing right away. Because right about now, I will say that, that that docuseries just felt really performative. It felt really performative. And I was just like, what was the point? What was the point? Because even though you want to put in there about the things that your father did to childhood and all this stuff, Kaylee ain't here to have a childhood. And we still harping on the fact that you never reported it right away. Okay? We're harping on that fact. And... You know, a lot of the things that the lies that was coming out and the reasoning that she gave for the reason why she lied and all that stuff, because that's all that I knew. No, 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 no. It wasn't good enough for me. It wasn't good enough for me. I said, so you lied about where you work with. You lied about the person you left your child with. You lied about this. You lied about that because that's what you grew up in a household of lies and all that stuff. Your baby. That's your baby, okay? You don't lie about shit like that. Like, why would you lie which would hinder you from getting your child? That don't make sense, Miss Casey. Like, it don't. It don't, girl. Yeah, a peacock, y'all doing the most over there, okay? And I'm going to tell y'all why. I really ain't got nothing else to say. Casey did that shit. I feel like her daddy helped or whatever. You know, I don't know if it was on purpose. Do I feel like it was on purpose? No. Do I feel like it probably was an accident? I could see that it could have been an accident. Some shit probably happened and, you know, just went a little bit too far. And, you know, it is what it is. Y'all could have just called the cops and they would probably understood y'all white or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know, y'all did this elaborate ass cover up. Y'all did all this bullshit. And so therefore, that's why you in the state where you in now, where people don't give a damn about your ass, okay? And feel like you are a child murderer and you still should be in jail, which we still feel like, most of us, okay? But anyway, um, getting off of her, let me just tell y'all this. Peacock, let me tell you this. I don't need no more um, docuseries about shit that we don't care about, okay? And this is water. Keep your H2O. Girl, I, I got to tell y'all. <laughs> my iron levels. Oh, my God. And, and I already told y'all for those, you know, this was getting a little bit, you know, it was that time of the month. And baby, like I'm already anemic. And it just, for some reason, this, this month, it just really took me down. Yesterday, I had to leave work early because, and I took my pill or whatever. I had to come back and take another pill because I just, I, I just felt myself fading the fuck away literally 30 minutes before I had lunch. It got to the point where I couldn't even eat lunch. Like I was hungry, but then I just couldn't eat it because I just did. I, I just, I don't know. It was exhausting me to fucking eat, bitch. I took a bite of my little um, BLT and that's a rarity because I don't even eat bacon like that no more. But I just had a craving for a BLT sandwich and I had got a BLT sandwich and I had took a bite of it. And I was just sitting there like, oh, my God, I can't do this. <laughs> I really could not eat my food yesterday. And so I said, listen, Miss Boss Lady, I'm going to have to go home. <laughs> she was like, go ahead. She already know the situation. She got diabetes, bitch. I got anemia, girl. We just be all going through it, okay? <laughs> I said, what the fuck? And literally, as soon I literally thought I was going to pass the fuck out before I got home. And I be thinking about that sometimes. I said, girl, what the hell? Now, you just went, girl, anyway. I came home, took a pill, drank me a whole bunch of water, and I gave myself probably like I just I just hunkered down for like an hour or so, and within that hour and a half or whatever, I started feeling more so stabilized. I said, "Bitch, so you mean to tell me that really what it was? Kicking my ass, okay?" I said, "Bitch, you trying to get off your shit, and now y'all gonna do this? I can see when it starts." Okay, but now it's ending and you still gonna kick my ass like this? I said, God damn, the shit we go through. But anyway, get back onto you, Miss Peacock. Miss Peacock, we don't give a damn, okay? Just like that friend of the family type of shit, y'all know what I'm talking about. And I told y'all about that. Remember, um, what was the show called on um Netflix? <sighs> y'all know what it does. Girl, very um adopted in plain sight. That one. 
They did that on Netflix, the docu-series on Netflix. Now, see, it was good. It was good because that shit had me, like, befuddled. I said, bitch, now, how the fuck y'all do some shit like that? Now, see, looking at the people talking about it, we already came to the conclusion that something wasn't right about that family either, okay? Like, they was either, you know, left behind or something. I just don't understand how y'all left that shit happen, right? You know, but multiple times. I can see one time, but multiple times by the same person, okay? That was that. But then Peacock went and took it and made it into an actual TV series, like a limited TV series, okay? Baby, I got an Anna Pack one signed on to this. I said, girl, that was the only reason why I turned into it. I said, you know, I didn't think the docu-series that was on Netflix. I really didn't need to see this. It was like when they did, uh, HBO Max did the, uh, the TV series version of the scare, the staircase murder, whatever, you know, that Arthur whose wife fell down the scare, uh, staircase and died or whatever. And, you know, they did a whole docuseries and see now what fucked me up is, um, I watched the docuseries before I watched the uh, HBO special, right? TV show. And it got to the point where I think I got like two episodes into the HBO spe uh, TV show and I didn't even go back. Okay. Because I was like, you know what? I didn't synced it already on Netflix and I prefer the Netflix, 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 uh, docuseries over the actual TV show. And that's the same thing that it was with Peacock and this whole friend of the family shit. You know, I think I got like probably halfway through, maybe five episodes in and I said, you know what? I just can't take it no more because the way that they made it look like. Even in the docu-series, they looked a little stupid, okay? I'm sorry to say it like that. The mama and the daddy was stupid to me. And then looking at the series on that, on Peacock, I said, bitch, the daddy and the mama look even more stupid. I said, are they really this dumb? Or did they dumb them down and exaggerate the shit for the goddamn TV show? And then they put up a special, come to find out he had more victims. I didn't even watch that little special or whatever. I said, girl, it's too much. It's too much. I don't need to see all of this. Peacock, y'all trying to get y'all money's worth, but I mean, you know, if you're going to put some documentaries out there, put some documentaries out there that we care about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, cases that we actually care about. Because at this point, y'all could have kept Miss Casey. Like, nobody was clamoring and saying, oh, let's watch this. I'm going to know what's going on with her. No, no. Stay in the, um, stay, stay, stay hidden. Stay hidden because, you know, they have found your ass now. Now that you to put yourself out there and people kind of know where your surroundings is, people have found out where your fucking address is. I'm not going to do that shit because I don't care. But, you know, people crazy these days. So, hey, it is what it is. Girl, I gave y'all a 32-minute video on something that I really didn't. Anyway, y'all tell me how y'all felt. Y'all watched it. Y'all ain't got to watch it. Don't watch I mean, you can watch it if you want to. What is it called? It's called... Girl, let me get to the app. It's called Where the Truth... Casey Anthony, Where the Truth Live. It's three one-hour episodes. Girl, if you want to and you got some time, watch it. If not, I don't blame you because it just ain't going to change my opinion. But y'all tell me how y'all feel. I'll see y'all later. Peace.